We have come quite a long way with our drag and drop journey, but today I want to continue by taking our drag and drop a little bit further and showing off how to drag and drop between multiple list views because so far, all we've done is drag and drop between canvases. But most applications probably aren't using canvases for their data, they're using list views or some kind of list control to display some kind of data. So in this application, I've set this up already, we're going to be dealing with a to-do list and let's just show off the UI real quick. So we have an in-progress to-do list and a completed to-do list. So what I want to do is whenever I finish any of these tasks, I want to be able to drag this task over to my completed list. And maybe I decide, you know what, I didn't do that task good enough. I didn't eat breakfast good enough. Then I'd want to drag it back to the in-progress and maybe try again, try eating breakfast again. That sounds good to me. But anyways, let's see what I have implemented so far in the code. So in the app.xaml.cs, we set up our to-do view model and we pass in a couple of to-do item listing view models. So one of these is an in-progress to-do item listing view model where I have the task I still have to do. And then I have a completed to-do item listing view model that has the task I've already done and I pass them to a to-do view model. So let's go to the to-do view model and let's bring up the corresponding view for this view model as well. So if we have these side by side, I have an in-progress to-do item listing view model and a completed to-do item listing view model and I simply bind to those in my UI. So half of my UI is the completed list and the other half is the in progress list. And then if we go to the to do item listing view model and the corresponding to do item listing view, this is just a list view that displays a collection of to do item view models. So hopefully this was a good way to demonstrate what I've done so far. I usually don't do a side by side view, but hopefully this is helpful just comparing the views to the view models. And then last but not least, the to do item listing view model is made up of a collection of to do item view models. Let's take a look at those. And those have a description, which we simply put in to a text block for each of the list view items. So my to do item listing view is where all the drag and drop functionality is gonna go. And if we see that on the UI, the to do item listing view is simply one of these, this list view right here. So I wanna be able to drag off this list view onto another list view that's gonna accept the drag and drop. So let's see how we can do this. Let's also keep in mind we have to do this through the view models. This is an MVVM application. So we are going to be hooking up the drag and drop events to commands on our view model as we did in previous parts of the series. So as always, let's begin by starting a drag and drop. So in our list view of to-do items, we're going to start a drag and drop by moving on one of the list view items. So in that case, that's going to be on this text block. So we're going to have a mouse move. Let's handle that. And as always, let's make sure the user was holding down the left mouse button. So they are trying the drag. So if the mouse button state is pressed, then we will take the drag drop class and call the do drag drop method. And now the drag source, well, that is gonna be the item in the list view that started the drag and drop. And this is pretty different than the canvas demo we've done so far, because in the canvas demo, we would just reference the item in the list view by its name. But we can't give these names because how would we name the items inside this list view if there's a dynamic amount of items and each item is gonna need a different name. And even if we name, say the first item, we'll call it test, we're not gonna be able to access that from the user control anyways, so it doesn't pop up in IntelliSense. But we can get the drag source from the sender parameter that gets passed into our event. So we are gonna have to check this sender parameter and make sure it is a dependency object. So we can just extend this if statement here by checking if the sender is a dependency object. And if it's true, we'll put it inside of this dependency object variable and pass that in as our drag source. And next up, we need data, which we're gonna wrap inside of a data object. And I've discussed data object in previous videos, and we're gonna use the format as data formats serializable. And now we also need to pass in the data for our drag and drop. So what is that data gonna be? Well, let's keep in mind what our goal is. And our goal is that we have a couple of to-do item listing view models, one for in-progress items and one for completed items. And we wanna pass to-do item view models. So those are the actual tasks with the description. We wanna pass these between multiple to-do item listing view models. So that means our data is gonna be a to-do item view model. So how do we get the to-do item view model here for our data? Well. The sender, as we recall, is one of our list view items. And we know our list view items have a data context of a to do item view model. So that being said, we can just get the data context of the sender. Now dependency object, if we look at that, does not have a data context. So instead, what we can do 
is check if this is a framework element, which will have a data context. And now for our data, we can take the framework element, get the data context, and instead of passing in a dependency object as our drag source, we can simply pass in framework element because framework element is derived from dependency object. And now last but not least, we can pass our drag drop effects, and this is simply going to be a move. So now let's try to start this drag and drop. And before we do that, let's get rid of this name on the text block because we're not gonna be doing naming here. And we actually have a slight bug here. So if we do a mouse move on top of the text block, it does work. But if we do it over here, then it doesn't work. And the reason for that is because the text block doesn't fill the list view item container. So what we can do instead is set up our item container style. So style, the target type is gonna be a list view item. And on here, we can have an event center and the event we wanna set for is the mouse move event. And on the list view item, we can apply our, what is currently text block mouse move as the handler. Remove that from our text block. And in fact, inside of this code behind, let's rename this to simply to do item mouse move. And now that the handler is on the list view item, we can start the drag and drop from anywhere on the list view item. So now we've started drag and drops, now we need to receive drag and drops. So we're gonna receive drag and drops on the list view, which means we are gonna allow drop on the list view, and then we're gonna have a drop handler. And we'll call this to do item list drop. And whenever we drop on the to do item list view, we're gonna notify the view model. So we're gonna have a command for this, as a dependency property. We'll call this the to do item drop command. It's gonna be an I command and the owner class will be the to do item listing view and by default, it'll be null. And now whenever we drop, we will first check if the command can execute. So the to do item drop command, check if it can execute. We just pass null as the parameter and if it can, then we will take that command once again and we will execute the command again, passing null as the parameter. And actually, since I do a null check here on the command, we have to provide a default value if it is indeed null, and that'll simply be false. So now let's actually create a command that we'll put on the view model to bind to this dependency property. So this will go in the commands folder. We'll call this the to do item received command, and we'll inherit from command base. So that all we have to do is implement execute. And for now, we'll just put a breakpoint here just to make sure this all works. And let's add this command to the to do item listing view model. So we'll have an I command property on here. The to do item received command will make it read only and then initialize this in the constructor. There we go. Make sure we import the command. And last but not least, let's set up the binding for this command. So let me just copy this name and go into the to do view where we have these to do item listing views and set the to do item drop command as a binding to the to do item received command. And we have to do this for both of our to do item listing views. And now I drag this and drop it. And there we go, we execute our command. So now all we have to do is take whatever that to do item view model was and put that on the correct to do item listing view model. And that is all gonna take place in the to do item receive command. So we are gonna need our to do item listing view model. So we'll put that in a field and get that through the constructor. And then back in the view model, we'll pass in the view model to the command. And now when we execute this command, we'll take our to do item listing view model and add a to do item and now, okay, what to do item view model do we add? Where do we get that from? Well, we know that back in the view, we know that that is the data context of whatever started the drag and drop. And we set that data context as the data for the drag and drop. So whenever we execute this command, we can get that data from the drag and drop, and that's gonna be in the drag event args. So we can take those event args, take a look at the data object and get the data. And we set that data in the form of serializable. So let's pass that as our format. And now we need to pass this data back up to our view model. And we saw in previous videos that the way to do that is with a two-way binding dependency property. So let's set up that dependency property and we'll call this incoming to do item and the type will be an object, the inner class that to do item listing view and by default, that'll be null. And we also wanna set this as framework property metadata so that we can set the dependency property as binds two way by default. And now let's just simply take that data from the drag and drop and set that as the value for the dependency property the incoming to do item. And now on the view model, let's bind to that item 
So we're gonna have a prop change on the to do item listing view model. And we know this is gonna be a to do item view model. And we'll call this incoming to do item view model. All right, I actually forgot to inherit from view model base on this view model. That is not good. There we go. So now back in our command, we can get the to do item that we want to add from our to do item listing view model. And that is the incoming to do item view model. And now this should actually work. So I drag this over to my completed list. And oh, okay. So it did actually add it. It did execute that command, but we forgot to set up our binding. So it actually just added null to our list of to do items because at the time this command was executed, the incoming to do item view model was null, and that is because we need to bind to the incoming to do item dependency property with our incoming to do item view model, and that's for both of these listing views. So now let's try this again, and there we go, we have moved this task over to our completed to do item list. But the last issue we have is that the item is still in our in progress list, so we didn't remove it from over here. And when are we going to remove this? Hmm, I'm actually thinking of when I want to remove it, either when I start the drag drop or whenever I leave the list view. I think I just want to remove it whenever I leave the list view. We'll start with that. So that means on the list view, we're going to have a drag leave. Let's generate an event handler for that. Call this to do item list drag leave. And we are going to have to send this event up to our view model so that we can remove the current to do item from our listing view model. So we're going to have the same kind of structure we have in the drop handler. So let me just copy that for now except we're gonna have a different command. So the command we're gonna have is going to be the to do item removed command. It'll be an I command once again, the inner class will be the to do item listing view and by default, it can just be null. And now let's use that command down here in our handler. Let's create a different dependency property for this two way binding of data. We'll call this the removed to do item. Once again, an object on the to do item listing view and the same metadata as before. So let's just paste that in there remove the old metadata because we do want this to bind two way by default. And now let's set that dependency property. So that should be good in the view. Let's update the view model. So we're going to need a new command first. We'll call this the to do item removed command, extend command base, implement the class. We know we're going to need our to do item listing view model in here so that we can actually remove the current to do item from that view model. So we will get that through the constructor again. We'll come back here in a second, leave this blank for now. Back in the to do item listing view model, we know we're gonna need our to do item removed command. We're also gonna need a new prop change. This time, still gonna be a to do item view model, but this is gonna be the removed to do item view model. Let's initialize our to do item removed command right down here in the constructor. And I wanna just test this command. So let me put a breakpoint in here. But before we test, let's not forget to set up our dependency properties, which we did forget last time. So on the to do view, we have a to do and a removed command, which is going to bind to the to do and a removed command on our view model. And then we have a removed to do item, which will be a binding to the removed to do item property on our view model. And let's actually move those to the other list view as well. And there we go. Let's make sure this command works. So let's head over here. And there we go, we fire the command, but we actually have the same issue that we discussed in previous videos where the drag leave event actually bubbles up. So how do we fix that before? Well, we simply disable hit testing on the list view items whenever a drag and drop started. So we're going to do that again. We're going to set is hit test visible, and we're actually going to bind that to a property on our user control. We'll call this is to do item hit test visible, and that'll come from our user control, which we are going to name root for simplicity. So generate that dependency property is to do item hit test visible, which is a Boolean. The inner class is the to do item listing view. And by default, this is going to be true so that we can start drag and drops. And before we start the drag and drop, we will set that dependency property to false. And then once we're done the drag and drop, we'll set it back to true. And there we go. I can drag all around on my list view and it doesn't continuously fire those events. So I'm going to go over to the completed list view and drop and there we go. So now all we have to do is remove this item. So now back in our command to remove to do items, we'll take our to do item listing view model. And similar to how we have an add to do item, this time we're going to have a remove to do item method. And we're going to pass in the remove to do item view model, which is going to be the to do item that left the list view. So let's generate that remove method. And this will be pretty simple. In fact, all we have to do is call remove on our observable collection and just pass in the to do item view model that we want to remove. So now it is time. I have a feeling this is going to work. Let's leave and not quite. So what happened there? 
Let's put a breakpoint here. Try this again. So we do call remove and the item is null. And that's because I'm a noob and this has to be a binding to the remove to do item view model. That is the name of the property on our to do item listing view model as we see right here and do that for both of these list views. So now we leave, we fire the event, which calls the command, which calls the method on our view model to remove the to do item. So now I drop on the completed list and there we go, gets added, but maybe my jog wasn't good enough or no, before it was, I didn't eat breakfast good enough. Let's put that back in the in progress. There we go. So we got the drag and drop working. And now the last thing we need to handle is if I drop on the same exact list view, because then it just adds the item twice. So what we want to do is in this add to do item method, let's first check if the to do item view models contains the to do item we want to add. And only if it does not, then we will add it. Now, same list view, dropping walk the dog and all is good. So I think that's where I'm going to wrap up this drag and drop demo. I feel like there's so much more you can do with list view. So for example, Maybe I wanted to reorder the items in my to-do list. That's another thing that I might want to go over, which might be a common use case, but I feel like that's enough for this video. Just a simple introduction to drag and drop with list views, but definitely something I want to expand on for some more advanced functionality. But unfortunately, I don't want this video to be too long, so we are going to wrap it up there. So same concepts as in previous videos, just applied to a list view. We started drag and drops, and then we use commands and two-way bindings to send data back up to our view model regarding the drag and drop. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section, especially if you have suggestions regarding drag and drop concepts that I should cover. If you're enjoying the channel and enjoyed this video, consider becoming a member. And lastly, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.